Hello, everyone. Sorry I am late. How are we doing on this very snowy Tuesday evening? Hello, how are you? It's a little too snowy to have to go out in, but it's beautiful. It is quite pretty. So I woke up this morning and went, am I blind? No, it's just everything is white. There's mm -hmm. just nothing to see. Yeah, it was so hard for me to go to work because I kept stopping to take pictures. I just thought, oh, man. Okay, gotta go. Uh, give me one second. I'm pulling up one link and then we can dive into all of this stuff tonight. Of course, I had all of this open, but Google Drive would like to fail me on the recent links. There we go. All right. Um, two things to run by you guys. One is there is an anonymous feedback survey. Um, this is due before you guys graduate on Thursday. Um, let me make sure that you can access that link. Yes, that's the right one. Um, I posted it in Slack. I also posted it in uh, the Zoom meeting chat. Um, there is a secret at the end of that that I can test you on on whether or not you completed it or not. Um, it is an anonymous feedback survey, so I won't know. It is truly anonymous. We do not have your email. We do not have uh, your name or any kind of submission on it. But there is a surprise at the end of it, and I will be asking you guys before we hand you the certificate on Thursday what the secret is. If you do not have, if you have not uh, filled out that form, you will not know what the secret is. So between now and Thursday at 5.30, make sure you fill that form out. Um, but I would not recommend rushing through it now. It will probably take you between 15 and 30 minutes to fill it out. Um, and before you do it, really think through of what can I do, uh, what feedback can I give on this program to make it better for the next round of students? Uh, believe it or not, the next cohort, cohort five, starts right in the middle of April. We, we have about a month to get our, our crap together. In fact, uh, Thursday is where our admissions uh, deadline is uh, closes. So if you have anyone in mind for the program that you would like to recommend, um, feel free to shoot me a Slack message, but more importantly, have them go to careersincode.org, apply and get through that process because uh, deadline is Thursday for cohort five students, anyone applying. With that said, before you fill out that feedback survey, think about uh, what we can do to improve the program, uh, fill out the questions that are in there, and then there is an uh, open notes section kind of at the end you are welcome to put every, anything and anything in there. Um, and like I said, that is truly anonymous. So if you have a piece of feedback that you actually would like to have a conversation about, shoot me a Slack message or schedule a one-on-one, -on -one. otherwise include it in that form um, and make sure you get all the way to the end and hit that final submit button. Uh, you will trust me, you will know what the secret is at the end of the form when you get to it. Um, and I will be quizzing all of you on that on Thursday before I hand over your diploma. We may have had a problem in previous cohorts of not having a ton of students fill this out. And so now we have a secret weapon deployed at the end of that form to make sure you guys all fill it out. Um, that is great. What's that, Jennifer? Dollars, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, Unfortunately, we do not have uh, extra discretionary funds to uh, bribe, I mean, incentivize you to fill out that feedback form, but uh, you will get a very dirty look from me when I hand over your certificate of completion if you do not know what the secret is um, at the end of that form. Um, with that said, uh, I am sending a second link your way, and this is the form that we'll be using for feedback tonight and tomorrow. Um, Hopefully this should be uh, pretty self-explanatory. 
Um, it is literally just a, a spot to put in the whoever's presenting uh, your name, or you can leave that blank if you uh, prefer to remain anonymous, um, and then any feedback that you have for the presenter. Um, this is, if you have nothing to say, you don't need to fill out the form. Um, at the end of the night, I will share a spreadsheet with you guys of all of these responses so that you can see what uh, your fellow students and myself have to say about your presentation. Um, oftentimes, we're typing very fast um, before the next person goes, but um, that form is just a quick way to drop in feedback about your fellow students uh, as they do their practice presentations tonight. Um, fortunately, I have a lot less to spiel about tonight. Uh, those are the only two links. Fire that up. Once one student goes, submit the form. Um, and then once the form is submitted, there will be a link to say, submit another response that takes you right back to the form, fill out the information again for the next student and go from there. Um, we are going to go in the order uh, that we will go in at graduation. Um, I'm going to pull that up right now. Um, does anyone have any outstanding questions before we switch over to doing our first kind of practice for the practice of the run through? I do, Max. Shoot. Where do I go to um, to RSVP for graduation? There should be a meetup.com link. Um, let's see. Uh, make sure I updated this. Yes, I did. Um, there is a meetup.com link that I just posted in the uh, Zoom chat and the live stream links. I should probably label this. Um, End of program feedback to Thursday. And this one is the feedback for presentations tonight and tomorrow. And this last one is for RSVP for Thursday. Um, and that meetup link is also the link that you would want to send to anyone else who is attending. Um, if anyone, if you're bringing any friends or family, um, that should have all the details about where it is and where to park and, uh, we'll send them a reminder and all of that good stuff. All right. Send it out. Have them hit the attend button just for a good head count. If you could, that would be great. Um, right. not, not super critical that we get the most accurate head count because we always end up with extra food that we end up shoving in your cars and encourage you guys to take home with you. Um, but uh, it is helpful to have a, a general idea of how many people are, are coming. Um, and I think it says 5.30 on the meetup page, um, but we won't actually kick off the event until 6 p.m. Uh, we use the first half hour for you guys to kind of get your jitters out um, and uh, get set up and all that stuff. So the event doesn't start until 6, but doors will open at 5.30. Okay. And Jesse will probably be there as early as five. I believe I will be there around that same time. Um, so if you really want to show up early, you can. Um, but like I said, we won't kick off until likely 6 p.m. Right. It doesn't mean you guys should get there at 5.59, but 5.30 should give you plenty of time. Any other questions? See, we have three TAs joining us tonight. Do any of you, I posted uh, Latonia's words of wisdom from uh, yesterday. Do any th of you three have any advice as graduates who have been through this before? Kind of putting you on the spot, sorry. I, I would say, wait, is Mel talking? Mel, are you talking? No, go ahead, Latonia. I was just going to say, don't overthink it. Like I really tell people, just enjoy what you're doing. You can't do anything wrong. So just get up there. Don't overthink it. You know all the hard work you put in. So just take your time and outline that and don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Remember, it is totally fine to have notes. Um, some of you guys have been sending me your presentations already uh, for feedback. Keep in mind that pretend like you're an audience member, right? Think about what you would think if you were sitting in the audience seeing someone's PowerPoint. Um, it's very easy to fall into the trap of having paragraphs and paragraphs of text, but think about any Apple event that you've seen launch or uh, think about any uh, well-made presentation. Oftentimes, the text is what you want to be saying aloud. That's what you want people to be listening into. The point of your slides is not to be a brain dump of everything that you're going to say. It's meant to keep you on track, right? It's meant to visually anchor the audience so they have something to look at while you're explaining the meaning behind what's on those slides. So um, you may see in the feedback form that, that I say way too much text. Go ahead and try and slim that down. That's not to say that the text you have on the slides itself is bad, but that text is often what you want to be reading aloud. So um, what I recommend to people is either move that into the, the presenter notes and print out a copy of the presenter notes um, or do some kind of outline for yourself to have up at the podium, uh, whether that's handwritten, whether you do that in Google Docs. Um, or my favorite is whenever I have a really important presentation where I know I'm going to forget stuff, um, I always do four by six or three by five index cards um, because then you have something that you say, hey, these are the really important things that I want to touch on for this slide. And then I have something that I can literally physically flip to the next one when I change my slide to make sure that I'm saying on point. Um, we are going to try and do a multiple screen share um, where I have a six minute timer counting down um, so that you guys get an idea of what six minutes feels like and how long you're spending on your presentation. No big deal if your presentations are not completely finalized tonight. No big deal if you still have a little bit more work to do on your capstones. Um, tonight, but by tomorrow's presentation, you guys really want um, you really want to get to the point of having it mostly mostly finished, right? Um, so let me just do six minutes. Let me do start and pause clear. Okay. Um, I was going to pull up the hmm. list of the order. And we are getting started with Schneider. What's up? All right. And this mm. is, by the way, going to be perfect practice for you guys, because when you get to uh, Lemoyne and you connect to their Wi-Fi network, when you go to present, you're going to join this very same uh, Zoom link. You're going to hit share screen. You're going to keep your microphone muted and your video off and you're gonna go ahead and share your screen. So this is good practice for getting your slides pulled up, having your demo ready to go, and being ready to just switch through all of that. Please, 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 for the love of God, make sure you have do not disturb mode enabled and everything closed out except two things on your screen, three things on your screen. Any terminals that you need to run your code, the browser window that you're going to be showing off and your slides. You should have nothing else open. These are being live streamed to YouTube. And I have actually been on stage and had a text message come in from my mother that says, good luck, honey, we believe in you. Um, and you really do not want that level of embarrassment in front of the audience. So do not disturb mode, only three windows open, the terminal to run your code or VS code, the browser window and your slides themselves. Whenever you are ready, Schneider. Okay. Um, <clears throat> six minutes, okay. Share screen. See my screen, everyone? Uh, yes. And while you have that up, I'm going to try. Oh, darn, I can't do a double screen share. Uh, 
Um, okay, I'm not going to have a timer for you, but I will interject with a two minute warning um, and uh, time's up. So if I if you hear someone talking over you, it's just me saying two minutes and time's up in the background. Um, before you go, Schneider, everyone should have that feedback form open. Uh, the uh, peer review form that I posted in uh, the Zoom chat and in um, and in Slack. Any questions before we kick off? I don't see the peer peer review on on here on Zoom. It's um, not. I'm about to post it right now. I just oh, know it as well. Thank you. There you go. Hey, Nicholas, got a lot to do. And it would help if it would let me get to the version that I can fill in. Okay. Um, I have those slides from on. And I've got that up. I've got that up. I've got the timer up. Okay. Down the street. Go for it. Okay. Um, hi, y'all. My name's Schneider. Shit. So, um, I'm in the Careers and Code Bootcamp. I decided to uh re uh blah 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 blah. Actually, I'm already messing up. All right. Um, what's the flow here? Like, for like um my EV for for this, I just name project mm -hmm. and then go on. Okay. Yeah. So hi, my name is Schneider and my project is EV now. So a little bit about me, if you want my content info, you can follow me on LinkedIn and send me an email if you really want to. So um, I'm in the careers and code bootcamp, but before I joined this bootcamp, I was doing um, learning the basics of web development through online resources like Google Camp and YouTube Academy. Um, I decided to join the bootcamp because self-learning was really tough because there's a ton that goes into this programming world. So having a set curriculum made things really easy for me. Outside of the boot camp, I love photography. And whenever the weather is nice, I like cruising around the city in my longboard. So why even now? Why did I decide to make my project around this? Well, electric vehicles are booming. They're uh, really popular these days, and especially with the push of uh, environmental goodness and um, gas cars are big bad now so we want to uh, make sure our environment stays nice and healthy and so electric vehicles are one way to go about that I designed this website because or rather I created this website because not many people know much about electric vehicles and if they want to um, get into that world you know they will want a resource so that's why I decided to do it EV now helps with um with this because again it's a website people can visit to uh, learn about electric vehicles they can learn about <clears throat> the 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 makes and models out there the price range and whatnot so in the development process when I was creating this um I took what I learned in class in the software development life cycle as well as keeping uh, track of the MVPs and what I really wanted to showcase in my capstone. Challenges were plentiful, plenty, plenty of challenges, um, but um, such as uh, time management, I found myself putting off um, certain things when I should have gotten them done you know, a lot sooner. Um, I found myself struggling against myself in the creative process. I tried to create, reinvent the wheel, if you will. Whole time, I should have just taken inspiration from other websites that I was around. CSS was a struggle. I'm not the best at it. And again, with the MVP, picking out what I really wanted to showcase versus trying to go all out and putting a bunch of features that were outside my skill set anyways. And uh, demo time. I would show my website, but I don't want to. So um, 
That's all, folks. Thank you. You got three minutes left. You really should practice your demo. Okay. Demo time. Um, um, mm, mm, mm. Um, this is my website, EV now. Uh, driving, driving demo. You got a nav bar, you got a footer. I'm really proud of the carousel. That was really hard to uh, get going. None of these links work because um well this one yeah okay so they do work but like you can't really interact with it because i don't have the database set up in aws so yeah okay so what i would say is figure out what you want your demo to be on localhost because you do not need to demo on aws but you do need to demo something Right. And so what you want to do is is your demo should should show either one of two things. It should either show one, the the secret sauce of the site, right? Why would people come to this website? Why are they going to use it? It doesn't matter if it's not super pretty. It doesn't matter if uh, you're embarrassed about how much more you need to do on it. What matters is why would people come to this site? That's what you want to show off. That's option one for your demo. The second option for your demo is to say, hey, this was the hardest thing for me to get working. Now, that may be you know, something full stack. That may be some algorithm that you wrote. That may be something that you took 10 one-on-ones in order to get to that point. That's what you want to show off, right? You either want to show off why people would use this site, or you want to show off where your blood, sweat, and tears for the past six months have gone. And so if you pick one of those two, that's what you want to be focusing in, focusing in on in tonight's class and tomorrow's class after we go through the, the examples of what am I demoing? Because that two to three minutes that you have to demo is going to go by really quick. But if you don't know what your demo path is, you're going to get to that same point where you freeze up, right? And you go, oh, my slides are done. I don't know what I'm doing next. Even if it's a page that all it's doing is doing that API call to the database and making the data show up, you can explain to the audience that takes 100 lines of code. That takes th uh, three different technologies. That takes um, so many different uh, different pieces of the puzzle. Don't be afraid to explain that and say, this is where I got stuck. This is what I got over. This is why this is so cool. Because this website that I created is not only a website, it's a web app that has a database behind it that's interactive, that allows users to um, you know, select these cars and these drop downs and have that information show up. Um, or one thing that I learned was I way underestimated how much time it would take to get a header and a footer show up on the page. Um, and that's a visual component that really anchors the site and make makes it feel interactive or right. It, it doesn't matter what you're demoing, but be proud of your demo. Um, and the way you can find your what you're proud of there is either why people are going to use the site or something that you really battled with and you're proud you got working. Thank you. Second feedback was good. Yep. Uh, stop sharing. And I'm not spieling that at you, Schneider, alone, because I know there will be other students who are at that same point tonight um, where they're, they, you know, they're most worried about their demo. So that feedback is for all of you guys. It's not just for just for Schneider.
Um, okay, so hopefully you guys all had a chance to submit the peer review form. If you have any feedback for Schneider, if you don't, uh, it's no big deal to fill that out. If you do notice a piece of someone's presentation uh, that you would like to provide them feedback on, uh, good, bad, or otherwise, feel free to fill out that form. We are moving on to our second presenter, which is Jordan. Uh, okay. So you said before, um, just have the code to run my site and sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did I go second? <laughs> All right. So uh, let me go ahead and screen share. And then I don't want to do this first. Okay. Hey, everybody. How's it going? My name is Jordan Murray. Um, I have been in careers and code for the past six months, and I'll be honest with you, six months ago, I didn't know anything. Um, I hadn't used like even a laptop or a PC in like, I want to say since like high school, I was just like never really did. Um, I also don't like phones. Uh, I'm kind of weird. Um, my contact info is right here in case you see anything you like um, and you want to get a hold of me or something, and I can go ahead and help you probably make that if I'm good enough. Um, but before I worked at CIC, or I mean, before I took CIC, I worked in sales internationally, and I currently work at tcgplayer.com. Uh, I chose to apply for the course because I want to make more money. I'll be completely honest. Um, if I'm going to be miserable, I may as well be miserable making more. Um, doesn't matter what I'm doing. No one ever wants to wake up in their life and say, you know what? I can't wait to wake up at 6.30 a.m. to be to work by 7.30 a.m. and then work all day for someone. Um, outside of the boot camp, I like to travel with my boyfriend, play video games, and watch retro anime. Um, my problem that I'm trying to solve is that I didn't have a hub to watch watch parties with friends or to like catch up on the same shows that we watched or the same movies that we watched. And then we like to talk, and some of us even do podcasts about it. Um, sometimes things like Discord don't allow us to share. We have different schedules, so we can't always make the same thing. And um, I've used sites like this before. So I mean, like, I don't understand. I mean, I didn't understand why I couldn't just jump into making one, but now I do. Um, I don't know what that second part was. So I'm going to skip over it. Think about the forms you filled out initially. Um, I chose this project because I wanted a space just for us. Um, Cause we talk a lot of shit all the time um, <laughs> about everything. So whenever we're watching something, we make fun of it and um, people hate it when we talk through stuff. Um, it doesn't really impact my life like crazy, but it's just something that would help since we're all so busy. Uh, the solution I came up with was, uh, the way I came up with it is a couple of friends asked me, uh, since I was in the course anyway, if I could get started on something like that. Uh, the course helped me to turn it into something from what I saw in my head into an actual viable product that I could start to use and nurture into a completed product that I wanted. It makes it different because it's a space just for us that we don't have to worry about like fees or anything like that, or our connection being cut. Uh, my creative process that I went through, I made all the stuff on Figma first, which really saved my butt because I uh, have terrible organizational skills at times, like terrible, terrible. So being allowed to like make a template for that and then writing in my steps afterwards and also having a great instructor that told me what my next step was along the way uh, really helped a lot. Um, I managed it by doing a small amount of work every every week because I have 40 hours um, at the job I'm currently at, but I just wanted to make sure it was good. Um, the challenges I faced was every project has problems and challenges or uh, was I was being pulled in a lot of different directions during class. I unionized my job, um, death in the family, stuff like that. And 
while those things didn't like really weigh me down too bad, it's just that it was a lot of random things occurring all at once. But I still found the time to make for class and the time to get most of what I needed to be done so that I can make sure that I was learning a new skill set. Uh, I worked on building my comments section, and I will admit that that was something that I built, but I messed it up a lot. Like the first time I completely deleted it like an idiot. And then like I got off the call and I was like, oh, my God, I just ruined this. And then I got back on and Doug uh, sat with me for three hours until I got the entire thing done. Uh, pretty much completely silent, just watching me code. And sometimes I would two minute was... warning demo. OK, um, so, yeah, honestly, um, that was the hardest part of it was the comment section. So let me demo this sucker. Uh, actually, that's right there. I can just do that. So this is it so far. Um, I don't have a fully running live stream yet. Um, just because getting the source from Retro Crush and waiting for the permissions, they still haven't gotten back to me about that. And I don't know of really the best way to go about it. Um, my comment section is on the other side of Zoom. Uh, so this is my comments right here. So I got it down to, you know, be able to add something in. And why didn't I? Oh yeah, shows up there, you know. Um, later on, I want to go ahead and add like a login with that and uh, definitely more channels. But for now, I have that. And then like, you know, you got your good old, your jams, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has a good time. Um, honestly, the schedule, <laughs> the schedule is what I uh, really want to get to work on too. Um, but that will eventually link up to whatever is playing on the live streams when I have a clear and set schedule of those. Um, and yeah, so this is my capstone. It was a lot of work, but and I felt like I didn't know a lot along the way. But honestly, thank you to everyone who helped me with it. But also at the same time, I feel a lot more confident in knowing that I can at least put the pieces together to create the product that I want now. And um, you know, not finishing those slides really, and the rest of your website really takes a couple seconds <laughs> off your presentation. <laughs> Believe it or not, you have 10 seconds left. All right. Well, I don't know if you guys like this song, but it's one of the best. <laughs> you do not need to, do, you do not need to full, fill the full six minutes. That's not like we're going to make you tap dance on stage or anything in, in, in that time period. Um, okay. But uh, we will kind of push you to to at that two minute mark. You don't really have to switch over to your demo, but you know it does it does take roughly two minutes to show off everything that you have here, right? So yeah, and um, I didn't really have a spiel set up for my website yeah, or for my demo yet, so I wanted to like work on that more. Cool, awesome work. Thank you. Uh, let me not screen share anymore. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Uh, we are moving on to, and if anyone has any like feedback that they just want to blurt out for the person instead of just putting it on the form, feel free to interrupt and come off mute and, and provide that feedback while I'm switching between a gazillion tabs. Uh, Jordan, did you just rickroll us? I mean, that was like me and Max. That was a tandem thing. <laughs> to, to be fair, we needed to grab an iframe and I just couldn't help myself and went went for Rick Astley. I'm sorry. That's awesome. Uh, up next, we have Jennifer. And by the way, we will be saying when we call you up to the stage, we'll be saying we have Jennifer up next and Brandon on deck. Sorry, I should have been better about doing that. And mm -hmm. I did find a Zoom app timer. So we're going to try that for you. I have no idea where it's going to show up for you guys, but we'll give it a try. All right. Thank you. Are you ready for the timer? Uh... I'm going to give you six minutes and 15 seconds just so we can see where this shows up. Can you guys see that somewhere? <laughs> it's on your face. Well, oh, it is. Video. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Hi, everybody. My name is Jennifer, and I'm here to talk about the capstone and my experience with careers in code. It was quite an experience. I lost my presentation right now, so please bear with me. 
a little tricky trying to get all of these windows. Oh, I almost have it. There we go. A little tricky getting all these windows where you need them to be. So I started Careers in Code and I was brand new to coding. I really wanted to figure out how I could grow more in my life. And at 45, decided to start looking into the tech industry. I just so happened to stumble across an ad on Facebook and I really felt like it was meant to be as I had already been thinking about looking into cybersecurity or programming. While I'm not fretting over my code or panicked out over syntax, I really enjoy as much time as I can with my dogs. I enjoy uh, taking endless photos of the outdoors and writing as much as I can when I'm inspired. My future goals include starting my new career, traveling, and eventually opening an animal rescue slash refuge. What's next? I'll be completing courses for additional coding languages, and I have some sites to build for myself and friends so I can expand on my portfolio. I'm exploring other educational opportunities also through Erie 21, and I'm considering the cybersecurity or IT program. My capstone is called Family Finder. And the problem I really wanted to solve was figuring out how animals could find homes when sad instances took place, like the family having to move and they couldn't take their animal with them, but more so maybe they were facing financial challenges or health challenges and they had to give up their pet. This was really important to me because I found this happening to my own parents. And it was really tough thinking about Noah, our dog, who had been a part of the family for years and who was all of a sudden going to get displaced and not know why and be confused and lonely and not know where his family went. So I just thought this would be a really nice way to focus one website for this purpose on rehoming animals, even though there are so many others out there that the financial and health challenges would be specific. It was quite a process. I had some challenges when it came to figuring out how I wanted to build the site, how many pages I needed, what I had to include. And so I used this really great tool called Figma then that really helped me map everything out. So I would know what I wanted on each page and how I needed to link them together to make it all work cohesively. I had my HTML code and my capstone. And I thought that was really a lot of fun until we got into a different program called React and JavaScript where it just seemed to all flow together so much better. And it was nice going from something so simple to something that was really way more functional than I could have made it. This is me when I get errors. What am I doing? What's the meaning of my existence? Why doesn't my code, why doesn't my code work? Two minute warning. Oh, I was just missing a semicolon. Darn you syntax. My challenges were that I had to work hard at my time management and I was working full time and handling a lot of personal responsibilities. I had to focus very carefully. I found HTML and CSS to be enjoyable, though JavaScript took a lot of hard work and I questioned myself many times as to why I was in the program. So now I wanna share with you what I have for my capstone and just show you a couple of different pages that I made. I'm really proud of the homepage. Uh, people might think a homepage is so simple, but it took a lot of work creating all of the navigational tabs and linking them together. So I could pop over to my login or sign up. And from there, I could go to my donation page, which I'm also really proud of because it can take you to another website which was 
it seems so simple, but linking that together, it, it took a little bit of work. It, it wasn't just writing a few lines of code. It was maybe a few hundred for one single page. So I still have yet to work on more of the information about animals for adoption and their animal information and put that information into my database with a list of users, their animal information, and to have that all come up onto this page and display for the user. I have a lot more work to do, but I'm very proud of what I accomplished and I'm really thankful for your time. Beautiful job hitting it at six minutes right on the dot. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Any live feedback before we move on? I loved the emotional connection you, you expressed with your parents uh, and emails, so that was touching. So. Oh, thank you, Kalai. Thank you. Okay. Uh, up next, we have Brandon. And following him, we have uh, Exona. Hello, everyone. Um, get this stuff. Oops. Going to interrupt just for one second. Make sure you go into slideshow mode. I've had this note for everyone so far. Up in the top right in Google Slides is that slideshow button, um, and that will take it into full screen. OK, that's what I was. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brandon, and I made Plantavox. Um, this is a little about me, LinkedIn, email. Um, and yeah, before careers in code, I, I was just in a lot of just like different positions. I was initially going to teach, didn't really feel that I was going to go into the medical field. Didn't, wasn't really for me. So I've been all over the place really. Um, and then one of my friends from high school, uh, she had done one of the, uh, I believe the surge program and mentioned that this cohort was coming up. She said I should be, you know, pretty cut out for it. So I thought I'd give it a try and here we are. <laughs> um, so the goal of my capstone um, was kind of just to find a way to ease the burden of rising uh, grocery prices, like uh, for fresh uh, produce, especially, um, as well as kind of uh, exploring different avenues of making a more kind of green impact at home as well uh let's see uh, so yeah my solution was coming up with a initially it was just going to be like a indoor watering plant or indoor plant watering um tracker excuse me but i kind of expanded on it from there i was like why not grow food at home you know you can you don't really i mean it, it depends on how much space you're going to need, but you could always go vertically or there's always all these different kinds of ways of kind of setting up your own planting setup or system that's not just a traditional garden outside. Um, let's see here. And yeah, so I have I've just been adding on so many different ideas of what I wanted this to become. Uh, so it, it was, yeah, <laughs> um, it was, it was trying. So the creative process was really chaotic for me at first because I just kept jumping from idea to idea to idea and not really settling on one specific thing. Um, and that got frustrating after a while, especially when I came to realize that a lot of what I wanted to do, I wasn't going to be able to do right away. Um, so yeah, making progress with the, with the capstone was mainly a lot of notebooks, papers, just writing down, <laughs> just jotting down notes and I, ideas of how to organize things a bit better. 
um, challenges that I ran into. Uh, the biggest problem for, or biggest challenge for me rather was, like I said earlier, over aggrandizing, thinking, oh, we're going to build the, you know, the next million dollar app in, in just these six months with <laughs> knowing, you know, as much as we do. But I always just needed to remind myself to bring it back down to what is it that the what's the you know the MV, the mvp the the smallest viable product that we can put out to then build on from there um another challenge that i ran into oh so yeah the back end the database building was really challenging for me personally uh because it it really just felt like i was just stringing together like paper clips and and rubber bands and just stay stay all right it's working leave it alone so <laughs> That was something that that was a big challenge for me personally. Um, and even initially when uh, we were learning uh, HTML and things like that, even just simple positioning was just a big problem at first that I eventually got to overcome. Two minute warning. All right. So um, what's next? I'm thinking of develop, I mean, further developing my website and building it up to what I envision it to be, as well as furthering my knowledge with JavaScript, because that is the one hurdle that is still really, uh, really fresh with me. So I, I want to be able to master JavaScript one day, just, you know, keep, keep the learning going. Okay, so let's switch over to my demo. So here's the homepage for the website. Um, here we would just have like a little carousel of images of, you know, different plant setups that someone can have with like different information, um, you know, describing, oh, excuse me, describing different setups for building or plotting at home or, oh my gosh. <laughs> and things like that. So uh, finally, I have a little selector here that, or a little index here that would uh, bring up information about different plants or crops that you have in mind to grow. And I'll just tell you a little bit more about that. Um, in future, I want to uh, build a more interactive uh, layout so you can visualize um, your your plans at, as you go. Um, and what else? Oh, and also in the journaling section, I want to add uh, picture functionality so that users can upload their plant progress as they go. That is six minutes on the dot. Awesome work. Good pacing, good slides. The only major feedback I have for you guys is no sentences on slides, right? Get it down to bullet points. That is just to anchor you visually. And then if you can add in some more pictures, right? Don't be afraid to screenshot Figma or take pictures of your notebook and no matter how crazy it looks, right? Or just try and have something else there um, so that when you're you're presenting, uh, people aren't just staring you down, they're looking at your slides and, and following along with you. But a uh, great example of taking you through the journey, making you feel like, you know, we understand what you've been doing for the past six months. And then also good job showing around the site and showing off the functionality and why the person would use it. Um, and I think that's one of the hardest things to get right is that you know, you're like, well, this is my capstone. This is what I've been crying over at night. You know, this is what do you want? And it's like, well, take a step back. Why should people be using your site? And Brandon, you did a great job of kind of taking them through that flow, right? Showing the different pages. And at the end of your capstone presentation, I should be able to, to say, oh, okay. I, yeah, I do want to check out that site. I would use that site. Um, and that's the user flow that you really want to get to of, of presenting. So great job on that. Thank you.
I, sorry for Am being I next? Oh, you are next. Thank you. Okay. Next is me. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Save me from switching tabs. <laughs> Give me one second. Sorry. No problem. Okay. You guys see that? And don't forget there is a timer up here to show you what the, the countdown is. All right, perfect. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Exona, um, and my capstone is uh, called um, after after grad prep. Uh, okay, so a little bit about me. For those of you who don't know me, I am Albanian American, um, and I before the careers of code uh, careers in code, I worked as a systems trainer um, for the city of Syracuse, and I was also a former educator for um, the Syracuse City School District. Um, I still work at the, at the city of Syracuse, um, which has helped a lot um, with knowing a little bit about coding and technology. Um, the reason why I chose to apply for the boot camp is because um, prior to getting hired for the city of Syracuse, I actually um, had an injury where I was laid off from work for both of my jobs, and I figured this would be the perfect time for me to take the time to actually think of a career that I want to pursue. Um, and I had a great friend that told me about this program and I chose to apply to it. So um, I'm glad that I'm here and I am able. To, I was able to finish it. Outside of the boot camp, I, I love tennis. I play tennis uh, as much as I can, but because of my injury, I have not been able to. Um, love reading and spending time with my beautiful family. Uh, so the problem that I was trying to solve with my capstone is um, as a as a former as a grad student, some some grad students don't know what schools they want to apply to after graduation. They take a standardized test, but they don't know which school that they uh, they're able to get into or a school that would be a great fit for them. Um, so that is the problem that I'm trying to solve is to provide those students with a uh, platform where they can go through <clears throat> um, a list of criteria that um, they can pick from and that would give them the best match for that school. Um, obviously, college applications, especially for grad schools, are super expensive. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they're over $100 per application, if not more. Um, so that would save them a lot of money because I know that as a college student, I was dead broke <laughs> after graduation. So I wouldn't ha have four or $500 to use um, for application. So that is why I, I've created after, uh, after grad prep, um, based off the certain criteria that a student chooses, uh, the website will give them a unique, uh, using a unique algorithm will provide them with the top three schools um and i went my creative process was all over the place um as you can see these are <clears throat> screenshots of my um uh, of my framework that i i have used and have used as a platform as a stepping stone for how i want to build my website uh, the website includes a home page, a sign in page, an account page, a criteria page, i.e., filter, and a results page. Um, the, these are the apps that I've used VS Code, DevOps, Trello, and GitHub as well. Uh, challenges that I faced was creating an, a functional web application or a website that with the user in mind. My whole entire th uh, train of thought was how is this user going to use this? What is the next step? What are they going to go next to? Um, I pretty much broke every single page at one point in time, but then I had to fix it and get better at it. Uh, time management was really, really rough for me because I working and go, and being in this program um, was very tough on my mental. Um, the biggest challenge was creating an algorithm and two minute warning that I don't have any I don't have any idea what, what's going on. Um, but I was able to actually complete it. Um, what's next? I'm going to continue taking online courses, applying for jobs, and working on my capstone. So we're just going to go straight into oops, my capstone. So this is my uh, 
my page right here, my front page. And what you can do is you can enter a score and uh, whatever standardized test that you took. So I'm gonna choose one, 167, actually 176 right here. And you, uh, these are all of the criterias that I have put into the system. So location, state, region, student population, uh, admission rate. Let's choose less than five because we want the top notch schools and schools that give us great people. And my grade, grade point average was 3.8. I did really good. What this is gonna show you is gonna show you the top three schools with the chances or with the best choices that you have. Right, so these are a really great fit for you because you've picked the right ones. I'm still working on my algorithm and it's not finished. I'm also going to be doing a um, table here, but so far this is what I have for my um, for my project. Awesome work, and with a couple seconds to spare. Any questions? <laughs> No, I was trying not to rush. No, 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 you were perfect. You, were, you weren't you were going way too fast, which is uh, which is good. Okay, cool. I think it was great. I would save more time for your demo because you have so much you can show um, yeah. and like talk about and it's it's awesome. So nice job. Thank you. Thank you. The CSS <laughs> was was crazy. Like that, that it looks so nice. Like, wow. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. A lot. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have. Oh, God, Exona, you should have done this. Oh, by the way, this is my algorithm. It's like 150 lines of code for just that algorithm. So that is an, a great example of, in general, you probably shouldn't be showing your code because most of the people in the audience will just start drooling because they don't understand what that code is. But this is a good example of code that is, is easy enough to read that if someone who has never looked at a line of code before looks at this, they could kind of get the gist of what's going on. So while in general, I don't recommend showing your code, there are exceptions like this one, where if you would like to integrate that as part of your demo or as part of your slides, you are welcome to. Um, because sometimes the best secret sauce is a, a complicated section of your code, right? And the, the goal is to not show off, hey, look at this complicated code that I wrote. It's the it's showing off the light bulb moment, right? It's being it's having that opportunity to say, like, hey, I knew this was going to be challenging. And then I figured it out. And once I figured it out, you couldn't stop me because all I wanted to do was finish the algorithm and get everything. Uh, typed out right and get that score adding together and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I like I said, in general, I don't recommend showing code, but if you are going to show your code, make it count, right? Tell it why, tell the audience why you got a light bulb moment or why you felt empowered or why you feel proud of this code. It's one thing to be like, yeah, and here's my code. It's another to be able to show your excitement over why this code is so cool, what you learn from it, why you're excited about it. So if you are going to show your code, which I think is totally fine in this case, make sure you've got the, the story behind why this code uh, made you excited or made you get excited or so empowered. OK, thank you. Awesome work. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Kalai. And after that, we have Patrick. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so my capstone project is going to be uh, how can we prioritize the patients in the emergency department? I'm going to so, stop you before you get too far in. You are in. Uh, you are sharing your presenter view display instead of the slide display. 
Um, there's a swap displays button up in the top left. If you hit that, uh, perfect. That does what we want. And you won't have multiple displays once you get up on stage. So that won't be a mistake that you can make uh, during the actual graduation. So about me, uh, these are my contact information. If anybody likes to uh, interested in one project or anything, we can, you know, talk through this. And I am basically a science major. I am working in lab. Bit lab is my, you know, uh, my part. So, you know, computer is too far for me. So I just wanted to do some data analysis course. That's when I got into like, you know, I was looking at the Facebook for data analysis courses and stuff. And then one day suddenly this bootcamp thing popped up and then I applied and then got uh, admitted for this program. So uh, as I said, I'm a researcher. I'm currently pursuing my PhD in biomedical science and I wanted to learn the bioinformatics as well as data analysis as part of my PhD. So I thought having the coding knowledge of Python and JavaScript may be helpful for me. And I love shopping, uh, watch movies, as well as I love cooking. Uh, what motivated me to do my capstone is, you know, uh, maybe like last year, probably, uh, I have been in like in year for two consecutive days. You know, I had my due to my personal reason, there was like severe palpitation. So I ended up in ER thinking that I had like severe chest pain and stayed there like two nights, you know, almost. So I, I realized not only me, like, you know, uh, I, I realized, you know, I, I'm not like, you know, really sick, but I can end up seeing lots of patients waiting there for hours. And, you know, they even like crying with pain, but still they cannot see the doctor and they have to end up leaving the, ER. So that's one reason, you know, motivated me to do actually do this project so that it will be beneficial for, you know, everybody like for general public. So uh, this, I think this, pro this problem actually impact the public. So as we cannot, you know, like any emergency we go because we cannot get the primary provider immediate appointments. So, and also where every time we go to the ER, it costs us money and also time, you know, sitting there for no reason. So I thought like, you know, uh, having some sites so that you can, you know, you can basically see like, you know, your check-in time, you can check in again and, you know, uh, know uh, like knowing how long you are waiting and stuff like, you know, waiting there and asking the nurse for like how, when I am going to get called. So I thought this will be useful for, you know, everybody. And also this will avoid the pressure on the healthcare system as well. Um, skills and process I used was basically JavaScript, React, databases, and APIs to link all the pages and stuff. And, you know, uh, and also connecting the hospital admin can use, you know, and uh, 911 can connect and they can see the status of the ER and, the patient, we can we can access the page from you know our home and see the status of the ER, et cetera. So I thought that's the, you know, those are the skills I learned and used it from here. And challenges every time I break the code when I am using React. So initially I was using just a regular HTML and CSS, but once I moved to React, every time I use the code, it just break and you know, I have to message Max to fix it, you know. Uh, so eventually I learned like, okay, like if I break one time un until I meet Max, I realize okay, it's better to have the additional copy. So I made like two or three copies in my computer desktop. So I can just work on those, you know, eventually. Uh, and like, you know, eventually I started learning few things, fixing the problems, you know, every time I cannot message Max. So I, small, small issues I was like fixing myself and I was meeting with other TAs as well. Uh, what's next? Uh, I think like I wanted to make it more interactive as well as wanted to add uh, artificial intelligence and algorithms so that it can update the priority number on its own. You know, instead of manual interruptions, I, I thought like based on patient's uh, symptoms, the system can automatically update the priority number. Uh, th those are the thing. And I think I wanted to get- warning. I wanted to get back into SQL API calls, you know, get to more. Um, so for this, I'm going to get into my capstone. Okay, that's ready. How am I going to move to the capstone, Max? Can I just stop sharing and share it?
Um, yeah, that's fine. I would recommend while you're switching it over that everyone have your capstone open either in a separate virtual desktop or as a minimized window just to make it a little bit easier to switch between the two of them. Okay. Can you see my capstone? Yeah. Can you see my capstone? Right? Yes, you're good. Okay. So uh, this is my login page. So I can just log in. Which can take it to uh, multiple pages. Like you can, I can go to the emergency room. This is going to be the hospital admin page. So from one page, they can shift to different pages, and you know, uh, they can look into the waiting room status. I think this is the page which is almost complete. So like you can see the patients waiting, and once you click their name, you can see all their details about their age, blood pressure, everything will be show show shows up. Uh, and from here, they can go to the ER status page, as well as I have a different pages for 911. Uh, so this is the patient check-in page. So the patient can check in uh, all the information here from their home, um, as well as this is going to be, so they can choose the different hospital based on the miles. Uh, those are the features I still didn't add, but those are the things I wanted to add later on as well as this is going to be the EMS da dashboard. So the EMS can check which hospital is close by and they can, you know, they can look into the ER status. Based on that, they can decide where they want to take to the take the patient to based on the rush of the hospital, et cetera. So I think with this, I'm done. Nice work. Uh, a good tip for everyone is that if you are, uh, if you need to log in, have your login screen up and type in your email and your password before you get on stage. So you don't actually have to hit that login button, but um, that will save you a couple seconds of typing. Um, not to mention uh, when you're on stage and when you're under pressure, you are almost guaranteed to type in your password wrong. And that is not where you want to be spending your time uh, uh, typing that in for your demo. So that can be a good trick to um, have that typed in before you get up on stage to make your, your process go a little smoother. Um, Kali, that is a great example of a perfect presentation, but you're at like the seven or eight minute mark, right? So practice uh, going through the slides a little bit quicker, practice going through your pages. Um, you definitely want to hit on in your in your project how there's so many different users, right? And there are different screens for those users. So think about how you can get through them a little bit more efficiently. And then also touch on the fact that you have spent hours and hours getting all of those data fields, right? All of those inputs, all of that information saving into the database. So you want to touch on that in your presentation as well, right? Say, hey, what took the most amount of time? What am I most proud of? The fact that this is almost fully operational, right? The fact that this data can be viewed not only by the user who's typing it in, but all of these different um, different types of users, right? That the EMS uh, information is available for the hospital. The hospital can see patient information. All of that information is getting saved into one central database. That's really impressive. So take a minute to brag about that and say all the, the hard work that it took to get that information all, all operational. Okay, next up we have uh, Patrick and Naj is on deck. Patrick, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I'm just pulling up my uh, PowerPoint.
and a reminder while you're doing that, that we will have, um, cannot believe I forgot to mention this at the beginning of class. Um, tomorrow, we will be in the traffic light Wait, conference. <laughs> uh, you have not started your screen share yet. There it is. Perfect. Um, before you dive into that, tomorrow we will be in person at Common Space in the Traffic Light Conference Room. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is in Common Space, but it is on the second floor where we meet for Open Hack and all of that stuff. Um, if you wander around, I'm sure you will find one of us. Um, we will have pizza for dinner, um, and we will also have the six-minute timer that we'll be using um, for the actual uh, presentations on Thursday. So you won't have to <coughs> squint at a tiny little countdown on your screen. You'll have that big red six-minute timer counting down to give you uh, an idea of how much time is left. Um, don't be afraid to be practicing on your slides between now and then, right? Um, go through, actually start a timer on your phone. Um, and and go through your slides and practice, not only uh, getting through your slides, but also practicing on your um, uh, on your demos, getting getting a good flow of all of that. Okay, uh, Patrick, go for it. All Don't right. forget to go into Everybody. slideshow mode. Okay. Is that better? Beautiful. Good to go. All right, cool. Hi, how's everybody doing? My name is Patrick. Um, <clears throat> so I created a capstone uh, that is a website called uh, Be Someone Kind. So I named the PowerPoint uh, Being Someone Kind to kind of like go into my life and how I <clears throat> and it inspired me to do that. Um, so who me? Who am I? <laughs> Um, my name is Patrick. I so far uh, am a musician. Uh, I excel at entertainment and like uh, singing and dancing and doing uh, local theater for uh, um, I'm so nervous, by the way. So if I stutter, just <laughs> bear with me. Um, so uh, I've done local theater for a lot. But the one thing that really affected me in my life was the fact that I ended up homeless when I was about 18 years old. Um, so when I left home and stuff and I didn't ha I didn't have many resources in my life to help me prosper I didn't have the um knowledge of knowing that there was something called Vera House uh that there's something called the Trevor Project that there's uh, resources for me to be able to uh help myself not get into the wrong crowd not end up with you know sleeping under a bridge or sleeping in my car and I wish that I had that as a youth specifically so uh, like, what are my endeavors? Uh, I like to, uh, one thing that I really would like to do is uh, be able to make opportunities for myself. Um, I have been working as a caterer and in uh, um, the mall specifically as a cashier for so long that I'm like, you know something, I feel like I, I can do something that's a little bit more meaningful and is able to help people out than just work day by day, long hours and be so exhausted. Um, so let me go to the next one. So my capstone specifically is about is leaning towards people that um, are either homeless or have mental health. And it is a big epidemic, especially in America, because it's not taken as seriously. Um, so what else can I say? Uh, I already basically went through that. Okay, so how can I help? How can I be the one that is going to make a make a difference like Michael Jackson taught me? Um, one thing that I can make a difference is creating a website that has all of the information that I could call or contact uh, so that I could be able to uh, not be scared about the fact that, oh, I have no home to sleep in today. Um, so far, while making this capstone, the one thing that I have really... Uh, like failed at doing is the message board. I've tr um, I've tried very hard to create a message board to where I could have a community create, uh, sorry, a community um, come together where like, for instance, if I'm homeless and I'm going through a hard time, I can uh, create an account and then message somebody else who's going through the same, who's going through the same thing so that I don't feel alone. <clears throat> uh, and also like time management and getting every, uh, getting everything done in a certain amount of time, uh, plus working. Like if I didn't work, it would have, I would have probably had this all done by now, but like, uh, doing this and working has been really, really, really hard. 
Um, so, so far, what is next? What do I want to do? Um, I want to pursue this. I want to keep, uh, I want to finish this website and then uh, have it open. And then I would like to figure out how to advertise it on, online so that it can generate a lot of uh, uh, people. <laughs> and then hopefully from there, it'll be able to help. Uh, and I know I have two minutes, so could you give me some advice on like what else to say? <laughs> oh, I have to do show you my demo. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry. It's not done. So please, you know, bear with me, but this is basically what I want to do. So I have all my hyperlinks. I have everything uh, that I would like to put on here. The awareness, which is just knowledge, uh, sorry, information on like what mental health is, because a lot of people really don't know what it is. I, everybody thinks that, you know, the stereotype of a uh, you know, schizophrenic, that's what's mental health, you know, or people that are bipolar, you know, they have, that's like the face of it, instead of just the fact that everybody has mental health issue or can have a mental health issue. And there's certain stresses that can, you know, allude to or lead, or lead to it eventually. So if we, it, the way that we can prevent ourselves from uh, uh, being judgmental and actually seeing the situations for what it is and able to help, um, then that will be, or sorry, uh, that will be able to uh, help us that you know don't primarily have mental uh, problems to be able to say, hey, visit this website. This is helping you. Uh, this can, uh, this will have communities on it. You can also donate. Um, I wanted to create a login, but I I didn't have enough time to create a login to to do it for the donations part. Uh, yeah, uh, like over here. I have my resources. I have some of the information that you would call. Um, I'm going to have pictures and I'm going to have, uh, uh, Jordan's going to help me put in a video where I'm going to uh, have myself probably explain what this website is so that it's easier for people to generate uh, or to go through it. All right. <laughs> thank you for listening. Uh, and thank you for uh, your patience and uh if you have any helpful tips, I would much appreciate it. I'm sweating my butt off right now. So thank you so much. <laughs> so while it always feels nerve wracking to, yes. to be presenting, you actually did a great job. It, it, while it feels like you're rambling, while it feels like that timer is just like burning out time, you're right on the six minute mark. You switch over to your demo. You're hitting on all the good points. You're telling your story. You're showing your website, right? That yeah. is, it doesn't feel like a perfect presentation, but that's exactly what we're going for, right? So okay. keep working on it. Keep um, uh, adding in whatever you need to for your demo. Think about what that user path is going to be, right? It's not just, here's what I made. It's, hey, here's what I want to show you. Here's what I'm excited about people using my website for. And that's what you should be focusing in on, right? For tonight and tomorrow, what can I get to that point where when I show my website, I can show confidently, this is why I want people to come to my website and use it. Um, so that's what what I would say focus in on. But in terms of your slides and telling your story and seeing kind of where you started from, what your motivation was, what got you to this point, um, bang on job of doing all of that, right? So so good work there. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to say, don't, and I, I want you to know, just don't say I, I failed at this or I didn't do this on Capstone. No, highlight what you have done because you went, like Latanya said, on a, you know, on, on the chat, we went from a blank page to an entire full stack development that, yeah. that we have, we're, you know, we have built. So be proud of yourself and just exude that confidence. Just don't say you failed. No, we don't. None of us have failed. All of us are passing this course. So you did not fail. Great note. <laughs> totally agree. Uh, any more advice? Hmm. Hmm. It's a great idea. Keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I may, Patrick, you're an entertainer. You've been on stage numerous times. Just pretend you're on stage and you know your lines and you got this. We're here to see oh, you. No. <laughs> turn it, turn it into a musical. In no, your own way, turn it into a musical or or <laughs> into a performance. 
That's way more than six minutes. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate you. <laughs> and thank you for the advice. It helps me. So now I'm much less nervous for, to, for uh, Thursday. Beautiful. Thank you. You should do like the hills are alive with the sound of coding. I know. <laughs> uh, Naj, I have you up next. And then we will take our break and finish up with Bobby Artrell, Alba, Niasia, Torres, and Brian. And Naj, while you are getting set up, um, I believe I just opened some additional one-on-ones for tomorrow, but only the 25-minute slot. So if anyone is feeling the the crunch and would like to book a one-on-one, -on -one, um, feel free to head over to my Calendly and grab a uh, slot that works for you. Now you're on mute if you are talking to us. Hello. Sorry, just trying to share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Uh, we can. Okie dokie. All right. Where's my, all right, I have a timer set. All right, so I did my capstone. I did a photography website to showcase my photography called Graceful Eye. Sorry, I went a little too fast. Sorry, guys, bear with me. All right, there we go. A little bit about it. Um, I strive to capture the world's beauty one image at a time. I'm Naj and I'm excited to show you what I've been working on. Come on. Um, I know it's not supposed to be a paragraph. Um, I'm gonna write little bullets on a card. A little bit about me, I was born and raised in Syracuse. I attended Syracuse City School District where I teach um, during COVID. When teaching became virtual, that's when I realized I needed to become more tech savvy. Um, when I heard about careers in code from a friend, I was excited to learn a new skill. Um, aside from teaching, I, I love to do photography. And so I've used what I learned in this program to build my capstone, which is the photography website. A little bit more about why I chose to apply to the program, uh, just to explore my opportunities and in incorporating coding skills and something else that I love to do. Also to possibly one day teach, teach it to some of my students. Um, my inspiration, this is my grandpa who I recently lost. Um, so family was a big inspiration for me to go try to do something new and see what I can do to kind of bring it all together. Some of the problems and why I created this uh, was just to attract potential clients who are looking for a photographer, another way to connect photographers, exchange ideas, um, to create a photo sharing platform and a feedback platform, um, to establish a brand identity for Graceful Eye, and to create a personal archive for my work and show my experiences. So that's the solution to those problems. It's Graceful Eye. Uh, the creative process was a bit much for me. Uh, Figma was something I used uh, to kind of like just do like the visual layout and kind of organize my thoughts and put them on a screen and not so jumbled in my thoughts. Uh, GitHub projects. Um, let's see. Yes. Sorry. Oh, wait. Sorry, this slide should have been a little bit later. One second. Um, some of the challenges that I faced were keeping up with the fast paced um, style of the bootcamp, learning multiple program, programming languages and managing my time with everything. Um, however, through persistence and hard work, I was able to overcome these challenges. 
also thanks to the whole Hack Up State team, all the TAs, the instructor, everybody who came and spoke. Uh, the resources were really helpful. Um, rubber ducking has been my best friend in this little duck. <laughs> this little duck is here to just remind me to sometimes kind of take a breather and um, not to put so much on my plate, which, <laughs> which is what I kind of did a little bit sometimes, set the bar a little bit high. But um, yeah, so the rubber duck was definitely a great reminder to sometimes just breathe and give it a new set of eyes. Then, all right, back here. All right, and at the end of it, these are some things I walk away with, some type of skills, languages, HTML coding languages, CSS, JavaScript, React, and a few others. Hang on, sorry, that was supposed to be after this slide. And then there is my contact information. There's that. Two minute warning, switch to your site. Okay. All right, so that's my presentation, guys. Um, just have to fix a few of the slides, but you guys got the gist of it. And then my side. Can you guys see? All right, so this is my site. Um, still working on a few things, but um, yeah, so this is a carousel slider in the middle. Um, just showcased a few images on the front home page, and then I finished my contact page, which is just a form for you guys to fill. Well, not you guys, for users to fill out. And then started to do my uh, digital gallery, which will have the different types of photos and everything that I take and everything like that. Sorry. And yeah, that's all I have so far, guys. Cool. So feedback for you is that gallery page took a lot of work, right? And that gallery page is the thing that made your project full stack. That was your, your moment to say, I got this in the database. I got an API working that I built out. I did all of this work. You've got 40 seconds left. Talk a little bit about that, right? Talk about how all of those, those languages that you had on a slide, it took every single one of them to make that, that gallery page work. Um, so don't be afraid to, to brag about that, right? Be a, a little bit more um, bold about, hey, I pulled it off, right? I, I made it to the finish line and I took everything that I've learned in the past six months and put it into that page to get it working, right? It doesn't matter that you needed one-on-ones uh, and, and help to do it. What matters is you did it. You got it working. You're able to, to say, hey, I have a full stack project here. And that's what you want to brag about a little bit. Thank you. Any other feedback, guys? No? Thanks. No, I look great. Yeah. Really, really yeah. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Impressive. I'm looking at your slideshow and I was like, Wow, is is that her her website? That's really cool. And then also I those are, those are all my family and my friends. <laughs> but, but you know, it was so good. I thought, oh, well, that's the website. Very talented with the design. So mm -hmm. I might I might keep you in con like I I will keep you in mind if I ever need photos, family photos, just so you know. I got you. I got you. <laughs> And, and don't be afraid to, to brag about that too, right? Like your site is very functional, right? As anyone going to your site, they can say, hey, this is a website. I see the point of this. I can see the functionality. I can see this actually being used, right? And so take a little, uh, a little uh, empowerment from that, right? And say, hey, I, I accomplished this. And this is why I'm graduating the program is I got this working. Okay, we are going to take a break. We will be back at 7.30. When we get back, uh, we've got Bobby Artrell, Alba, Niaja, Torres, and Bryant.
See why we run this like the Emmys? See why we will not be afraid to clap you off stage if you go over the six minutes? It takes a while to go through all of this, but but trust me, it will all be worth it on graduation day. Um, so when we get back uh, 7.30, we will keep going on the rest of the slides. Um, and I do have the, I did check all of your uh, form responses are going through. So I will post the spreadsheet with all of the feedback that is coming in from me, your uh, other TAs and your fellow students as well. See you guys at 7.30. You are on mute, Archrell, if you're talking to us. I almost certainly was, and I, I forgot. Okay. So I don't have my slides yet, but the contents from each slide I do have. Beautiful. Works for us. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Archrell. And um, before Careers in Code, I was working full time at Driver's Village. I chose to apply to the boot camp because I've always been interested in computer technology and I wanted to learn more about it. Outside of the boot camp, I like to watch sunsets and take long walks on the beach. Mm -hmm. I also try to be a better dad and a decent example to my son. So the problem, forgetting to carry coupons with me when I go to the grocery store. When cashiers ring me out and ask if I have coupons, it's a constant reminder that I don't bring them. I thought it would be convenient to have access to them in my phone or internet capable device. On top of that, to also know what coupons I can use in certain stores. So my solution, it took some time to come up to this point. Most of the ideas I came up with have already been done, but this made sense to me, linking coupons, to make my search for them fast and efficient. Saving money is also a good thing, especially in this current economic climate. So the creative process I came up with um, was by sketching out my designs and writing them down. I do better with that than some of the other programs. As far as challenges I ran into, I ran into a lot. Outside of the time management aspect, syntax was very important to my code. Specific characters like commas and parentheses are also important and can drive you crazy if you make a mistake. I learned how to read errors in the bottom of my code and to also go line by line to check every character. I had many victories, but sometimes I had to get help from the instructors. So what's next? What I want to work on next is expanding some of the features and content of my site. What surprised me is how intense and immersive this project is and how hard it can be sometimes to make the decision on which way to go. With that being said, I present you my project, Coupon Click. So this is the main page of Coupon Clip. And I have a drop down for my stores for a variety of different coupons. I also have a drop down where you can create an account and you can log in. And I also have different sub regions for my different stores. I also have a functional about page and home button. So the purpose of coupon clips is depending where you are, you can link to the stores in your area. Since we're in the Northeast, I'll click on the Northeast. So I have a little table here where I have the names of some supermarkets. I can obviously expand upon this. So for those who are into shopping a price shopper, you can go to your link to see what's in your area. Well, when that one's functional. Oh, I guess I didn't have that one working. So say you go to Wegmans. Do the store finder and say you're in Syracuse, but which one you want to go to? So you want to go to a Fairmont store. You can click on that and it gives you information about that particular location from their website. Or if you want to know what coupons you can use in Wegmans, you can click on this one. And it gives you an idea of some of the digital coupons 
that are there if they are available at that time. You also can use the coupons from my main page drop down. Now, this was able to work based on um, creating a, that table that I showed you on the user's front end and back end of the code and having a database. And that's how the computer accessed it. And that's what I'm really, really proud about. Um, of course, other aspects of it, like my about page. Do you like to save money? Good, we do too. We wanna to connect that fellow some of the area coupons to make shopping an easier experience. And that's basically the gist of it. I will expand upon it in the future. Uh, so thank you, any questions? Were you using cards in the beginning or were you reading off your slides? Oh, what I was reading um, off my phone. So yesterday I was just like speaking it out loud. I was using speech to text as recorded on my phone before I put them on the cards, so slides, but that's what I was doing, reading off my phone. So I'll say it's nice and clear cut. You obviously have more time to go, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't need to fill the full six minutes, but I feel like there were more struggles, more things that you overcame throughout the past six months. And I want to hear more about them, both in your your slide half of everything and also in your site, right? Just because you can show it working, okay, great. But what did it take to get it working? What was the struggle? What are you uh, glad that you overcame, right? Um, you mentioned a, a couple next steps. That's good but it is a major accomplishment that you got to this point over the past half of a year, right? So we want to hear a little bit more about that. Peel back the covers a little bit. Peel back, let's see the man behind the curtain. What did it take to pull all of this off? Um, you've got some really cool stuff in your site, right? You, you got the database working, and then you went, oh, it turns out that I really need to think about this user interface. Right. You had that moment where you went, well, there's nothing on this homepage except a, an image of a cart. Uh, well, what am I going to show up there? Maybe I should add in some cards. Maybe I should make it interactive. That's the journey that we want to hear about. Right. It's not just here's my site. Here's here's the version of it that I have right now. What did it take to get you to this current version? Thank you, Max. Sorry, I'm trying to capture this in notes, but unfortunately, I talk much faster than I type. Um, Okay, next up we have uh, Alba and Niaja is on deck. And Alba, you are on mute. Don't worry, that is a mistake you will not be able to make uh, when you get up uh, on the on uh, the stage. You will not unmute on Thursday. We'll have a different microphone working for that. Okay. So good evening. My name is Alba Diaz, and my project name is Food Resources in Syracuse, New York. Um, it is based on food pantries in the north, south, east, and west side of um, Syracuse. Um, a little bit about me. After 17 and a half years in the customer service industry and rent to own, I decided that I needed a career change where I went to Syracuse Northeast Community Center and was introduced to the EOC Center um, where they do trainings. I continued to do word certification, CompTIA certifications, and some coding and cybersecurity also assure fundamental certifications. Um, and that's where I fell in love with coding. 
I decided that I wanted to start um, looking into going into the coding industry and found out about the careers in code. Um, I applied for the careers in code and after coming into the project, um, I decided that um, this is something that I wanted to do. Um, I am currently working as a digital navigator for people that don't understand technology so I could get them and bridge the gap to be able to get them to do projects like this one or to be able to get into programs like this one um, and bridging the gap in technology where people don't understand and know about it. These are some of my um, contact information, email, a link to my project, and my GitHub handle. Um, what was the problem I was trying to solve? Lack of information to resources, families going hungry, resources being wasted, and help and to help the vulnerable population to be empowered through information. So providing information about food pantries and the resources that are already available in Syracuse, um, but people cannot get to them because they don't have the information to actually um, use the resources. I had a problem where an older gentleman that was 72 years old had gone hungry for three days because he couldn't find anybody to deliver food to him. He had money in his food stamp card. He tried ordering, but because he done, did not have a credit card to link to the account, he was not able to get the delivery services. So some people might have the financial uh, information, but they actually need other resources to be able to reach, um, to reach those um, resources. Um, my solution to the problem is creating a website that um, gives information to the customer in an easy way where if they do not know any technology or don't know how to use their phone properly or don't know how to use internet, they're able to get to the information without having to link to different pages just to get a piece of information. So um, my project has a site where they could click on the side of town that they actually live in and get the pantries available in that area. Um, my process, I started with a wireframe to kind of have a feel of how I wanted the project to look. Um, then we went to HTML and CSS, and I created my project in those um, languages to make sure that I understood what the process was, and then evolved the project to JavaScript, React, and have a back-end um, database to it to be able to add all of the project, all of the um, information about the pantries. My challenges. There were a lot of challenges on trying to get the proper information about the pantries themselves and um, linking to sites, finding information. And after finding the information, finding out it was the wrong information, going on the wrong day, calling the wrong number, not being able to get in touch with somebody personally that could actually provide if the information was correct or not. What's next for me? Um, I would like to expand uh, on the pantry database itself. So I would like to add more pantries. I started my pages at four pantries plus the Food Bank of Central New York for their information. Um, I would like for organizations and the community members that use the site to actually send me information about new pantries that they would like to add to the project so I could expand Two on- Two minute warning. So I could expand on the database and see um, if I could add more technology or more database, more pantries to the database to give people more information. This is my data on my um, website linked to my database. And this is my website. So like I said, my website has a North, East, West, and South page. You could go to each page and it will generate four food pantries plus the central bank, the food bank of central New York. You could, link, you could click on the links to the site so it could take you to that food pantry itself if you want to learn more about the food pantry and to have more information about what other resources they get and their social media handle so you could get further information on each pantry or each resource that you could get information from. Each page has their own pantry on their own area. Um, we have a contact form in case the custom, um, the client would like to send me information or would like has any other 
uh, feedback of um, what I should do um, with the site. Um, a new pantry request so people could actually put in the information if they want a new pantry to be added on into the site where it would be sent to me and then I would actually um, have to approve it so we could go into the site itself and a pantry update if any information that you find in the uh, pantries is outdated change or anything like that then they could send me a request to actually update the pantry itself thank you for um, coming today and um for helping uh, all of the students on everything that they needed. Great job. You've squeezed it just in time. Um, you have so much functionality here. I would touch on the fact that you were always one step ahead, right? As soon as you learned something, you had it implemented in your capstone before we could even say, hey, capstone demo coming up, you have to have this done, right? You were such ahead of the pack there own that. Say, hey, this is what I was learning, right? And these are the checkpoints that I hit where we learned HTML and I use this project to kind of fuel and to funnel what we're learning into an actual thing that I could practice with it, right? Um, and don't be afraid to touch on the fact that, hey, very early on when I was doing my mock-ups, I realized that um, I really wanted to make this site not only be a capstone project, be something, but be something that can help the community. Um, and because of that, I realized that this wasn't just a, a matter of getting this information into a database. This was something that I know needed to be living, updatable data. So I had the foresight to think about um, a new pantry adding form and a pantry edit form. Um, and then I uh, was able to take it a step further and realize that, well, not everyone should be able to edit a pantry. So I thought through uh, the features and the implementation to have an administrator page where I'm able to update it, right? That's all very impressive. Yes, you made the site, but this is so much more than just a directory site of all the pantries that you have added. There's so much that goes into the database and the API calls and the admin side of things and the database design. Touch on that. You did a great job of taking us through page by page, but thinking about, think about what's the impressive part, right? What took you the longest to pull off? What did you just get done yesterday before, before you, you did this demo, right? We want a little bit more of that excitement because this isn't just, hey, I made a website, here are all these pantries. You worked hard to get all that pantry information. You worked through the features to make sure that this website uh, was expandable, that could grow, could easily be updated. That's the excitement we wanna feel, right? It's not just, here are these three pages. It's, hey, here's why this site is going to be such a, a big help to the community. And no, I am not going to spend five minutes do it, typing that spiel into your feedback store, uh, your feedback form. So hopefully you uh, you remembered that. Any other feedback from anyone else? Great time, great timing. You were right at that six minute mark. So just a little bit of fine tuning to do there, but great job on on filling that. Okie doke. Great work. We are moving on. We are nearing the uh, bottom of the list. Um, Nyasia, we have you up next with, uh, do not see Torres. So we've got Nyasia and then Brian to wrap us up. And don't forget to unmute Nyasia. Oh, you are unmuted. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, okay, maybe I take it back. You were unmuted, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There you go. I had to take my headphones out. Sorry. Can you guys see my screen, though? You can. Just hit the slideshow button before you get started. Okay. So let me go here. All right. Cool. My name is Nyasia, and um, the name of my capstone is Ablacho uh, Ricette. It basically means a chef's kiss in Italian. And no, I'm not Italian, but I just like the culture. So that's why I named it that. Um, about me, 
I've worked with children my whole life. Um, I just wanted to get into a different career field and I saw careers in cold. So I researched it and, you know, I thought it was going to be easy, but it takes a lot of hard work and, you know, focus and dedication, but it's very rewarding because, you know, the challenges are, are good. Um, won't let me go. Oh, there we go. I just made like a little page of like about me, what I do outside of here. Um, I'm the leader of a praise dance group. This is me and my dad, me and my sisters, me and my grandfather. Um, he's a big part of why I cook. He teaches me how to cook and stuff like that. Um, this is something I've made. Um, I have a lot of videos of food I made, but I didn't put it on here. Um, this is my contact info. And so why I created my capstone is because I wanted to make um, one website where everybody can search and upload recipes on one website where they don't have to, you know, cross reference and look at a whole bunch of different recipes just to find one that they really like. Um, my first thing I was going to make was a social media for people who love to cook, but then, you know, I just changed it. So um, the name of my project came from watching a lot of Italian cooking videos. And also my great grandma liked it to do um, a lot of Italian food. So I just took that and ran with it. Um, this is basically just a picture of my chalkboard. I use that a lot. I use wireframes and this is just a picture. I just put it in there. Um, challenges, I had a lot of challenges. Um, I had a challenge building my backend database, figuring how I wanted my website to look. Um, grasping tech, technical concepts, getting my images to show up, getting my code right. Um, time management was really hard for me, like working, I work with kids with disabilities and sometimes it takes a lot out of me and I didn't want to come home and do work. Um, my solutions were talking to Jason, talking to Max, um, asking for help, doing a lot of research, um, watching videos, and that's pretty much it. What's next? I want to work on making this website, um, an actual website that people will actually use and love. I want to add more things to it. Um, I really want to learn more about the database and getting it to cross-reference recipes for people. Um, and I want to apply for more jobs and internships and take classes towards computer science. And um, I have my demo, but um, something happened. My capstone crashed. So Max is going to help me after this, but I just have my rough draft before I push it over to the uh, React app. So just going to show you guys that. Um, this is how it was looking before I got it to the React app. And you just log in and then you see the top recipes. And, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. And I'm done with my thingy. Questions. I know uh, Nigel reached out to me for help uh, before before everything uh, before class. Um, don't just say, "Hey, here are my pages." Like, walk think think through like a user, right? And say, "Hey, when the user lands on my homepage, they're presented with a login screen. Um, if they don't have an account, we have an, a, a create account form uh, that's already integrated with the database and collects the required information." From there, they're able to move on to the recipes page uh, where they're able to preview images, uh, you know, touch on all of that because that's all really impressive, right? That didn't just pop in. That's work that you invested into it. So when you're doing your demo, it's very easy. And this goes for everyone to be like, all right, here's what I made. I'm done. Um, but you want to walk them through, entice the user, make sure that they, that the, the people in the audience go, oh, that's really cool. I want to check that out. Or I want to talk to them after this, after the presentation and learn more about how they made that. Right. So that's what you want to capture into your, your, um, your demo. Um, and definitely understand the last minute with code breaking. It, it happens. Um, but awesome job on your slides. The only feedback, the main point of feedback that I have is no paragraphs, no major sentences, go for more bullets. But you did a great job telling your story, kind of documenting us through the slides, what you want to work on, where you got stuck. Really awesome job on that. So keep up, up the good work. Little tweaks you need to do, but for the most part, your, your content on the slides is, is spot on. Awesome.
Uh, Brian, take us home. I didn't miss anyone, did I? That would be really embarrassing. Okay. okay. Brian, go for it. All right. Um, let's hope this works. All right. I'm going to share. All right. You guys see my screen? Okay. All right. I'm going to start the PowerPoint. I think this should pop up over there. Do you guys see the PowerPoint now? Unfortunately, we do not. We don't. Okay. Um, I'm using Keynote, and I've never used Keynote before. That probably wasn't a good idea. Um, um, if you, instead of sharing the Chrome window, if you share desktop one or desktop two, it should share the slides. Okay. And this is the that. very reason why we do this. Is so everyone gets practice. Okay. That, there you go. That. And now if you hit the play button up at the top. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Now hit the, uh, this won't be a problem, <laughs> but hit this swap displays button. Oh, this one. Okay, there you go. You're good to go. Okay. Um. All right. So yeah, the name of my app is Check Ball. My name is Brian Hill. I am a student in Careers and Code cohort four. Um. A lot of this, I, I still do need to fill out some more. So this is pretty sparse, but that's that's my uh, contact info. Um. A little bit about me is I was uh, born and raised in Syracuse. Um. I've always had an interest in tech and uh, development, specifically as I got older, um, but I was unable to find a program that tied it all together outside of college. Um, I went to college for politics and, you know, more social type things, and I really didn't want to go back to college for that. So um, I tried a lot of different programs, um, like Code Academy and Free Code Camp, and, you know, I tried to take jobs that I would ideally try to get some some coding experience on in that way, but it didn't really work out. So, um, yeah, I was really grateful to, to stumble onto careers in code. Um, but again, I love the intersection of health and technology. Uh, I love using it to help improve myself and others. Um, and just a little thing about myself, I enjoy hiking and, and being in nature. Uh, all right, so the, the problem that I was to solve with my app was based around recreational sports. Um, they're very fun, but they can be hard to coordinate, even if you know, you're playing with people that you know. Um, and it's also a great way to meet new people um, if you're in a new area or, you know, whether it's for college or work or anything like that. But it's even harder to coordinate in that case since you don't really know anyone. You don't really know where the places are that people go. Um, there's lots of apps that help facilitate meetings in general, um, but there's none that really have streamlined the process for meetups um, surrounding recreational sports. Uh, so my solution was to build an app that focused on these particular problems and to build it in a way that makes the process as easy as possible. So um, for me, that meant having a very simple interface. So that's what I like. Um, I wanted it to be easy to post a game and to check other posted games. And I want a lot of steps to, to do either of those things. Um, and I really just wanted to focus completely on these specific types of meetups. And that way I could build features that, you know, more so matter to those specific type of users. Um, and to do that, um, I used React, Node.js, Postgres, um, and Amazon Web Services. Um, as far as my creative process, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I just tried to imagine an app that I would want to use, um, something that I would be quick to pull out and, and use in this case. And in that case, it would have to be something that was very simple. Um, and so once I got that in mind, um, you know, I was able to condense that into an MVP um, with the help of Max just to make something that, you know, we can make with the skills that we learned in class and um, also seeing ideas from other classmates that helped in the design process um, and just combining all the skills from all the projects that we did in class. Um, I felt like I was able to apply those to the project or the capstone, I should say. Um, my challenges were, you know, just tying all the pieces together, whether that be the APIs, the routing in the database, you know, it was one thing to learn those things, but it's another thing to put them all together. Um, and I thought that was, you know, it was challenging, but it, it made it that much more rewarding when everything did come together. Um, and working alone, of course, like everyone in the class, I, we had a ton of resources and there was no shortage of people to reach out to. But at the end of the day, all of us had to find ourselves like, you know, trying to face a problem alone. Um, and that's a challenge, but I think it's, it's the one that's important to overcome. You know, you, I feel like you gain a lot by finding out things when you're working by yourself. And um, styling, I don't really have a, a great sense of style. So, you know, again, so just looking at other people's projects, finding things on the internet, uh, resources like coolers and stuff. I think it's it's really possible to to make great design these days, even if you don't have um, something innately. 
Um, and lastly, the, the biggest challenge for me personally in the app was filtering. Um, I wanted it to be a, uh, a big part of the app because, you know, filtering is important to get through lots of information. Um, so all the ways that I tried to do it, you know, over time, I found that they could be condensed and reused. And, you know, I got back to the principle that Max taught us about dry and reusing your code. And, and just lastly, just time management. Yeah. So um, what is next? Uh, so ideally, it would be a career in code. Um, and I would also like to build up the app so that it's even more useful than it is now and very secure. Um, and I would like to learn more and become an expert at a language or a framework, ideally um, React or, you know, just anything, but actually just really capitalize on what we've learned here and um, building more personal and eventually enterprise projects that, you know, other people can use in their businesses. I was bad. I didn't give you your two minute warning. Sorry. Okay. That's all right. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to, I might have to stop share to do the, can I start again? Okay. And then here. All right. So here is my, my application. This is check ball. This is the homepage. All right. I still need to work on the design there. So, so please don't judge me. Um, all right. And this is the homepage. Again, I wanted everything to be very simple. Um, up here, you have the filters for the games that are posted up on the right hand side of the screen. And on the left hand side, you have a section towards the bottom where you can post the game. Um, so like I said, the games on the right are the games that are already existing and posted. Um, as you can see, you can filter based on the sport that you choose. Um, if you would like to see more about that game, you can click more and go into that. Go back um, to be in the spirit of full stack. If you don't want this game here anymore, you can delete that game and that can go. Um, and lastly, if you would like to create a game, uh, we'll say a soccer game that you're playing outdoor on a Tuesday. Uh, we'll see the location is Show Park. All right. And through React, you can see that game is on the page. Uh, again, a big part of React is just being able to have this update in the real time, which is something that I really like to be able to do. And I was able to incorporate that in the app. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically my app and my capstone and my experience. I thank you all for listening and watching and everyone that played a part in helping me get to this point. Beautifully done. And you were right at the six minute mark. So that is a, a pretty much the perfect example of a good demo, right? Login screen, here's the functionality, here's what I'm proud of, here's the interface, uh, here's, here's taking you through the steps of if you are a user and actually using the app, bang on job with that. Um, I would say, uh, don't be afraid to spice up your slides a little bit, a little bit of color, a little bit of animation, a little bit of images. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, especially after seeing like other people's on mic, yeah, I got it. But it, it's been a while, to, to be fair, it's been so long since I made a PowerPoint. It's like, since like <laughs> freshman year of college, and I don't want to say how long that's been. <laughs> uh, awesome job. So I, I know this eats up a lot of time, um, but hopefully it gives you a better idea of what the graduation is going to feel like. Um, tomorrow we will be doing this again. Um, except we will be doing it even faster, right? Very, uh, very short. Um, I've already uh, given you guys the, the feedback on the form, so we won't have any delays. Jesse will be here um, so that you'll get a feel of what graduation is going to feel like, what we're going to go over before, those, um, before uh, we actually get to it. Um, I just sent in the live stream channel a link to the spreadsheet that has all of the feedback that you guys have provided to the student. So scroll down to wherever your name is. There may be a couple rows that are out of order there, um, but you can see the feedback that not only I have provided, but other TAs have been filling out as we've been going. Um, and if you guys have feedback for a, for a particular student that you haven't put in yet, um, go ahead and, and submit that form you know, by nine o'clock ish or whatever. And that spreadsheet will live update with that feedback. Um, any questions in general about tomorrow before we switch over to helping people with projects and where they may be lost or need some help? In person tomorrow at Common Space. Um, if you cannot make it virtually, please try to tune in um, virtually. We will still have Zoom open. You'll still be sharing your screen when you present. 
work on your slides, work on your demos. It is much more important that your demo is smooth than it is that your project is fully functional, right? This is what you are showing off. You are in control of your demo. You get to control uh, what you're showing off. So spend the time investing in that. Jennifer. Um, I noticed the first name of the presenter, most of them are Schneider. And the other two are Jordan. I don't want to go one too many times. So yeah, no. <laughs> so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, wait a second. Where's my feedback? Because I can see the person who provided the feedback. But not um, the person. So your feedback is on line 16, line 21, line 22. You want to share your screen and I can take a look. Um, okay. There we go. I was just looking like, why? All right. Sorry, just have to scroll a little bit. There should be yeah. 78 lines and you're, you may be intermixed in them, um, but your feedback should be there in, you're looking for your name in column B. <laughs> Thanks. I was so confused because it wouldn't scroll for me for a minute. And I was like, why? <laughs> no, we only like to give Schneider feedback and no other students. Oh, dear. Oh, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -mm. Okay, I'm going to duck into a breakout room with Niasia only because she uh, asked for help before class. I've also made Mel and Caitlin uh, co-hosts so they can make their own uh, breakout rooms. Um, and they will also be available to answer questions. I will be back in a couple minutes uh, if there are any general questions for the class. But now is your time to work on slides, work on your capstone. Remember, the goal is tomorrow at 8.30 that you have a code freeze and a slide freeze which means you are fully done. You can take a breath off, a, a sigh of relief. You can take a the load off your shoulders. Tomorrow, 8.30 is it. That's what the goal is. Um, do not forget to fill out the uh, post-program feedback form by Thursday at 5.30. Otherwise, you will be getting glaring looks from me throughout your entire graduation of why you haven't completed it. And trust me, I know it's anonymous, but I will find a way to find out. I will be back in a couple minutes. Uh, feel free to work on your slides or ask uh, Mel or Caitlin questions. Uh, yeah. Okay, three breakout rooms just in case anyone needs them. And I'm going to take the first one. Caitlin, do you mind if we go in a breakout room? Yep, we can do that. Just give me one second. Uh, where are you? Uh, two, okay.
Thanks for all the good feedback, guys. That was really helpful. Uh, Patrick, you had also asked for help. Do you want to go into a breakout room? Yes. yes. You got it. I hate breakout rooms so freaking much. Okay, what if I...
See y'all tomorrow. Have a good night, guys. With a whopping six minutes left, I'm available for the rest of the class for questions. I have a quick question, Max. Shoot. You mentioned don't use the Times New Roman. Is that any specific reason? Because I always use that even in my slides for presentations. So. so Times New Roman streams default font um, and design language says you shouldn't use Times New Roman. Um, so you can use Arial, you can use Veranda, you can use like any font that you want. Times New Roman and Comic Sans are two fonts that I personally cannot stand. Oh. Um, it's one thing for an academic paper when you're like putting it out and turning it in. Okay, Times New Roman is fine for that. But um, for anything kind of design oriented, uh, Comic Sans and uh, Times New Roman are the two fonts that I can't stand. But if you are like, Times New Roman is my favorite font, Max, you can go right to hell. I respect that and you can keep on using it. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. Artrell, what's going on? Um, can I use Wingding for my font? Oh. So, you know, I don't know if it's going to show up. I've got this nice little button. Uh, can you? <laughs> and when you press it, and it's got a, 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 a nice, Random assortment of so in that regard, and so I just have this at the ready. So when someone trolls me, I can troll them right back with a good button press. It's like the easy button, but the fuck you button. Fair enough. Um, I also on my code, my my drop down wasn't like staying open. Like it, it's really like a chore to try to get it to to stay down. Um, I could try to get help on it. I'll just ignore it and just go to my cards. <laughs> that That's fine. Um, I do have some one-on-ones available tomorrow. Um, or the other thing you can do is delete your node modules and uh, zip up your front end and send it to me in Slack. And then I can try and help you debug it that way as well. All right, that'd be the better of the two because I, I got to work tomorrow. And I don't, you know what I mean? Work totally tomorrow. get it. All right. Thanks, um, Max. Yeah. After you delete your your node modules and you make the zip and you send it to me, 
make sure to run npm install before you run npm start again, because otherwise you're going to get all kinds of errors about missing modules that you just have to reinstall. After I send it to you when I want to work on it. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions I can answer for you guys? You know you work in a healthy work environment when you can use a fuck you button judiciously with your boss. What, I didn't say our YouTube videos were for kids. They're rated PG-13 or whatever. I will stick around for the next couple minutes in case any questions pop up. Otherwise, you are welcome to head out of here. Thank you guys for going through the presentations and giving uh, each other feedback. Thanks, Max. You have a good night. Good night, everyone. Good job. Thank you. You too. Good job. Thank you, Max. Good night. Yeah.